Good evening everyone, it's uh, Councillor Ray and uh, welcome to another session uh, of my Ask Paul Live. It has just turned uh, 6.30 so I'm just going to leave it about a minute just to let some people start to join the live feed. Then I'll go through a couple of local updates of no and then uh, we'll open it up to the questions that have been sent to me in advance and that you are putting uh, either to me by a WhatsApp uh, Twitter, um, email, uh, the live feed, etc. Just while we are waiting for people to join, uh, I think first and foremost, obviously, I hope everyone is well and keeping safe in these most challenging of times. It's uh, obviously quite a, an interesting world we are in at the moment, and I think, you know, we need to have the determination to keep going and, and try in a difficult situation to be as positive as possible. So as I said, just waiting for a minute or so for people to uh, join. I'm just getting my comments ready so I can see who is uh, commenting, etc. Um, just give it about another 30 seconds. And yeah, I can see people now starting to join uh, the feed, so that's great. Uh, apologies if uh, it takes me a few moments to pick up comments as we go through this, because uh, the internet connection, I'm sure, is for everyone else, is struggling a little bit uh, with everybody being on the internet and doing what they are doing. So just as people now start to join the live feed, uh, I'm just going to go through some local updates uh, of no, and then we'll start picking up the questions. So I think probably the, the, the first one to really raise uh, is obviously the news of the re additional restrictions to uh, the f uh, chapel and funeral service here in Leeds, obviously a, a very sensitive and um, emotive subject. Uh, there was a, an official council uh, announcement yesterday and a number of um, council crematoriums uh, and other facilities have now had uh, access to them restricted. Uh, I'm not going to go through the uh, full briefing now, uh, I am going to post an update to that on my Facebook later today. Uh, these decisions haven't been taken uh, lightly, they are in line with government guidance and obviously the last thing we want to do is cause anyone distress or upset in relation to how we deal with the loss of their, their family members or to go visit family members that have uh, sadly uh, passed away previously and are in our crematoriums or uh, sites or uh, graveyards. Uh, the situation will be reviewed in line with the government guidance but bearing in mind where we are it is likely that for a, a reasonable period uh, those aforementioned uh, facilities will be restricted. As I've said I will get a post out about that uh, with more details a little later. Uh, just a, an update on where we are as a, a council in terms of our finances. We've now estimated that the um, virus response and loss of income to the council has accumulated to approximately £129 million. Uh, that will predominantly affect uh, our budget for this new financial uh, year. It's obviously a huge concern. It's an absolutely vast chunk of money and the council is now uh, lobbying the government with other councils of all political persuasions and uh, with MPs to try and make sure that we get some uh, form of financial assistance back. So far we've got about £22 million back, but it's obviously not uh, a huge amount. Um, another quick update, and I know this is one that has... Hello Brenda. Uh, I know this is one that has um, caused a lot of issue along the riverfront, which is barbecues. Uh, now for a lot of city centre dwellers who live in apartments with balconies, on a really hot day, uh, it would be... Hello Paul. Uh, it would be really great uh, to sit there and have a barbecue, completely get that. Please don't. Um, simple reason is they are a massive fire risk. Uh, now, West Yorkshire Fire Service doesn't have any particular legal powers to stop people having barbecues on balconies. Uh, however, a lot of the buildings in the city centre, particularly places like Leeds Stock, have interim fire measures in place because of combustible materials and cladding, and they do have the right to shut buildings down, which could obviously put some people homeless. So I really do implore, please, please don't be having barbecues on your balconies. The other bit to remember is that actually 
uh, smoke can be classed as an antisocial activity. So if you are burning a barbecue and that smoke's going into someone else's apartment, they can actually get in contact with the council and raise it as an antisocial issue, which we have a duty to try and enforce. Uh, hello to Lynn, to Adrian, to uh, who else just said hello to me? Uh, to Nicola. So um, there are a couple of very quick updates. I'm going to start going through some of the questions people have sent me in advance. If obviously people want to um, start putting questions now, then obviously I'll pick them up as I go along. So uh, first question I had in advance was uh, around uh, personal protective equipment and what the council is doing. So I'm not going to delve into a huge amount of detail because there's a huge amount of detail behind it, but the council is in the process of uh, getting contracts to procure its own personal protective equipment for um, our own staff and for some of the more vulnerable um, third parties, uh, care homes, etc. in the city. Um, we already had a contract for this. Uh, we're looking to sign uh, additional contracts or have signed additional contracts. There's a lot of work going on in the third sector to try and get materials. It is a really big push and uh, Leeds City Council with the other councils of West Yorkshire have been really pushing the government hard on the procurement of getting this to uh, the most vulnerable uh, users as possible. We have obviously a huge concern over the um, residential care sector um, where a lot of the outbreaks are quite destructive to be fair so making sure staff have that protective equipment is an absolute priority so the council is working really heavily on that we are doing the best we can uh, another question I had in advance on this uh, was in relation to the supermarkets and their delivery slots not something the council has a huge amount of control over these are private businesses uh, and to be fair their demand is unprecedented uh, I even tried to do my online shop with Morrison's because I shop at Morrison's and I, it couldn't give me a delivery date. So all we would say to that is, you know, it's something the council is aware of. We are working really well with the supermarket sector here in Leeds, but their availability is driven by really complex algorithms and the fact that they have unprecedented demand. So there's not much we can do, but we will look to support where we can. Um, Another question I had in advance is over the message about litter bins. So it's a bit of an odd one. Uh, what we are saying to people, just to be really clear, is we would prefer you not to use the council's litter bins. A uh, simple reason being, we are collecting them, but we're doing them very highly irregularly. Basically, it's being driven by staff numbers. And where we've got the staff, we'll go out and get them to do it. Where we don't have the staff, then we don't. And the majority of the time, uh, our cleaner neighbourhood staff, uh, we've got a large amount on sickness and we've got a large amount supporting the bin crews to make sure we take your green and your black waste from your property which is the biggest priority. We are picking up fly tipping where it's reported and deemed to be a hazard. So what we are saying to residents is, though we can't pick stuff up in our normal 48 hour turnaround, still report it. Uh, once the staff levels are at appropriate level, intermittently, we'll go and do uh, collection jobs. Where staff levels uh, return to normal, whenever that happens, then we will do a big backlog of work. So please do keep reporting fly tipping. Please do keep reporting um, environmental issues. It's just going to take us longer to get to them. Uh, so. There are a couple of the questions I had in advance. Let's just see if I've had any questions from anyone else on anything else. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, Paul, so in terms of barbecues in your own private garden, uh, yeah, of course you can. That there's no specific rules that stops anyone from having a barbecue. Um, for the city centre apartments, this is a specific issue because a lot of them have dangerous cladding or combustible materials on and so they're putting at risk the fire safety of the building and West Yorkshire Fire Service has a legal duty that if a, a building isn't safe they have to shut it down. A lot of these have interim measures in place to try and make sure that this doesn't happen so what we're saying is that's dangerous. In terms of the smoke that's a very specific different issue so if you have barbecue and you have smoke well smoke comes off the barbecue. 
if that smoke is causing a nuisance to your neighbours, basically it's you're doing it every single night and it's wafting into the house, or more realistically, if you're burning waste in your garden, then that does become a problem. So all we're really saying to people, just be aware of the anti-social aspect, but the particular barbecue point is mainly focused on the balconies in the city centre, just because of the uh, potential fire risk with them having interim measures because uh, of their fire safety. Brenda, um, yeah, in, in terms of the, the pictures of people for the clap uh, yesterday, yeah, I, I've seen them as well, and obviously it does probably perhaps send not the greatest message when you're seeing lots of people absolutely rightly supporting and showing moral support for our key workers uh, in big huddles and I think particularly for the blue light services that did that that's probably something they're getting back via their uh, feedback they, they do get feedback on this and, and I think they have to set a very clear message about social distancing like uh, everybody else does um, let's have a look uh, Kaylee uh, in regards to the rubbish being dumped by people so, the reason why we've closed the uh, council waste facility is because we can't guarantee social distancing. Uh, delivering waste is obviously a very manual business, um, and though the government said we can have the facilities open, uh, pretty much Glees, along with all the other major councils, have said, that's all well and good. Our staff are on sickness, uh, we've got lots of self-isolation, we can't guarantee we can maintain social distancing that puts our staff at risk of catching the virus and also puts the public at risk so that's the particular reason why the tips are closed now this is under constant review uh, and if we get to the position sooner rather than later where we can actually manage the numbers then i think a review will be made uh, in terms of the fly tipping that is out and about uh, again if people report that into us uh, we will collect it as soon as we possibly can, subject to numbers. Uh, if it's a health hazard, we will certainly prioritise it. Uh, the backlog, it's been logged and it will be recovered uh, as soon as we get back to normal. But they are actually still doing quite a lot of fly tipping collection. They're just taking longer or they're prioritising it based on health needs. Uh, so it's, yeah, we get the the, the tips are an issue for people. Uh, the stuff I would like to uh, take to uh, the Leeds City Council tip, and I'm having to keep it in my garden at the moment. So I do share the frustration, but it is around making sure that our staff are kept as safe as possible. Um, let's have a look. Any other questions coming through? Uh, hello to a couple of other people. I've come. Oh wow, yes, we're getting a couple of more come through. Hello, hello to lots of other people. Uh, wow, I'm not going to be able to say hello to everyone as you're coming through because this is now getting quite busy. Um, uh, Sammy, in relation to the horses and so more. Now, um, the horses team, and I didn't even realise we had a horses team at Leeds City Council, but we do. Horses at leeds.gov.uk. Um, they are aware of this. Uh, the horses are actually being moved between Northcote playing field and Hunslet Mark uh, by the person that owns them. Now, the normal rules around this is we would approach the owner, ask them to move the horses. Uh, if they don't move the horses, we would require an order to basically take the horses into council custody, uh, and then they would have to release them. We're in obviously a really weird situation where the court process just isn't happening at the moment, because uh, the cops aren't taking non-priority cases. Uh, I am aware of this because I'm getting complaints from people from the um, other side of Dewsbury Road when they're on the North Court playing field and this side. You're going to have to bear with us. We are trying to encourage the la the actual horse owner to move them. Um, but the difficulty we're having is is we can't overly enforce that at the moment because we can't get the order by the court to seize the horse if they don't. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Sarah, in terms of your question about disabled people and access, uh, if you can give me some specific details of where this is, because obviously that's quite a wide topic, uh, and if you if I can have some specifics, I can look into the individual specifics of that, if that's okay. Uh, Katie, uh, what should people do if people can't get rid of the waste now they can't take it to the uh, skip? 
So what we're seeing is so things like um, brown uh, waste, garden waste, uh, we're asking where possible for people to compost them. If they can't compost them, and there are great tips on how to do that from our colleagues at uh, Zero Waste Leads, uh, you can find them on Facebook under Zero Waste Leads. Uh, we're asking people to dry store them, so put them in bags, put them in a shed, put them away, uh, and then once the brown uh, bin service starts again, we will be doing recovery rounds to pick them up. In terms of bulk items, uh, again, if they are something that can be donated to the third sector once this gets back to normal, we're asking people where possible to keep them dry and safe. Uh, and if it's something that they would normally take to the dump, again, just try and store them. It costs us quite a lot of money to pick up uh, fly tipping. So we get the urge of people wanting to get out of the house. There's a lot of DIY happening now because we're all stir crazy at home. But we are asking people to be thoughtful. It, bearing in mind the cost impact of COVID on the council, it would be really, really useful if people helped save us money by keeping on with them until the service is back up to full uh, operation and the third sector is back to pick up a lot of these items. Um, Jim, uh, let's have a look at your question. Right, in terms of the face masks, uh, this is an interesting one. Um, the World Health Organization has basically, I mean this came upon uh, question time last night, what the World Health Organization is, they're not making a general recommendation for people to wear them at the moment. The actual benefit, uh, according to the research, is actually if you are potentially contagious and you need to go out, it actually reduces the risk of you passing on somebody else. In itself, it's not protective of you because you're still breathing in through it, but it's capturing um, the uh, moist, uh, moisture and, 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 and kind of like droplets of saliva as you breathe out. So it's a weird one. I think the government, in all fairness, is being guided by the advice from the World Health Organization on this particular one. I think if the World Health Organization comes out and says, actually do it, I think we'll probably see quite a quick turnaround. Uh, but as I've said, it, it, it's not really stopping people get it if it's in the air they're breathing. It's stopping people or reducing the risk of it being breathed into uh the general environment and so actually those people should be staying at home anyway so it's not clear cut and I think we just need to wait for the scientists to give us some kind of proper explanation. Simon, um, in terms of uh, dog fouling, um, whether dog fouling please do report that into our environmental team uh, as normal. Uh, I'll put a link into the um, comments at the end of this. We consider this to be a really high environmental and health and safety risk. If this stuff gets into people's eyes, it, particularly for the younger, the more vulnerable, it can blind and, and it's just icky to put it politely. So we still want that to be reported. Um, where we get high instances of dog fouling in general, once we get into the kind of post pandemic world, we do have a dedicated civil enforcement officer uh, that covers Huntsland Riverside Ward and Beater and Holbeck. We uh, jointly employ them. And where we are getting hotspots, we will gladly direct them. Now, that officer has the ability to hand out £100 fines to anyone instantly if they don't have a dog poo bag, for example. So what we would say is they will go, go home, get it. I'll take you, I'll watch you go home and get it. In terms of the current situation, our big message is to people is to take it, bag it, take it home, put it in your black bin. We know that's not always the greatest message to get across, but it will it will gladly go into the general waste as long as it's bagged. Uh, but long term, those hot spots will get our local enforcement officer to try and pick that up. And then we just approved just before the lockdown a load of additional new bins for some of our packs, including um, Huntsell at Moor. So hopefully that should help. But any issues you see, any dog fouling, still report it on to us. Might take a little bit longer to pick up, but it is a health hazard that we need to get to. Uh, let's have a look. Wow, I've had loads more people join. Hello, Paul. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Janet. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Laura. Hello, Brenda. Brenda, you seem to have joined twice. Right, let's see if there's any more questions coming through. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, do, 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 
do. So I'm just having a quick look at all the variety of ways you're all contacting me. Um, Yeah, uh, Laura, in terms of the path through Hunslet Moor, yes, there is still a top coat to go on to it. Um, so they basically did all the layers up to the top coat. Um, we were speaking to Vicky, who's our uh, parks manager, uh, a couple of days ago actually about it. And what she is intending to do is, subject to staff numbers, they are going around to finish those jobs. Uh, there are some um, upgrades we're doing across the ward and across the city, because she covers more than just this ward where they were halfway through jobs so they're just making sure those are safe and then what they'll do is they'll go through a priority list of what can and can't be done based on current staffing numbers but that is uh, something that is going to get another layer on top it'll have a little bit of wear and tear without that top layer in the meantime but that'll be easily fixed once the top layer goes on uh Taylor lee i arranged for I arranged to have to be collected from my property months ago, but it's still... Right, Kaylee. in terms, if you've arranged for a collection via a Leeds City Council Civic Enterprise team, I was under the impression, and because they've told me, that they're still doing collections. So if that was done via Leeds Civic Enterprise, it might be under the Presto brand, you might know it as. If you can drop me a message uh, to my direct messages and I'll pick that up. If it's to another waste company, um, all we're really asking people to do is... If you can put it back onto your property, as long as it's not obs uh, obstructing a public footpath, we are taking a very softly, softly approach at the moment. The main thing we want to do is people just to keep it safe and maintained and then we'll come and deal with it uh, later. So a lot really depends on whether you've asked us to pick it up, which in that case we're still collecting. Drop me a message and I'll pick it up with Civic Enterprise Leeds. If it was a third party company, I mean obviously chase them if you've paid them, but if you can just put it back into your property in the short term as long as you basically as long as it's not an absolute tip and it's causing a, a public hazard in general then you'll be fine in the current climate uh let's have a look any other comments coming through uh let's have a look see if we've got anything on whatsapp uh which is hard to do because my whatsapp's there and my whatsapp's here so um Nothing got WhatsApp, any emails. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Hi Paul, our events. Right, just got a question from someone about public events. Um, pretty much all public events on Leeds City Council property have been, actually not all of them on Leeds City Council property have been cancelled to the end of June. Uh, there will be a review at a later date about it. Uh, obviously we're taking guidance from the government I think the difficulty is even when they fall, when they shut down the, the, the lockdown that we've got, I, I think we all have to be realistic. We're not returning back to normal life for a little while. And my particular feeling on this is that we'll probably have some sort of phase return to normality. Now, from that perspective, uh, it will be guided by the government first and foremost. And I think that's the right and proper thing to do. Um, but we'll look at that. Uh, let's have a look at any other questions. Let's have a look at Twitter, see if anything's come through there. Um, uh, someone sent me a question via email uh, in, reg in regards to, and I know several people have raised this on some of the community forums, in regards to the sound barrier on the Parnabies. Uh, now, the Parnabies is actually not Hunslet Riverside Ward, it's actually Middleton Park Ward. Um, but the sound barrier will be, ex or is planning to be extended down to parts of the Hunslet Riverside Ward and it's going to plan to be extended uh, into other parts of the ward as they continue the Junction 1 to 7 uh, upgrades. Now, it, for those that don't know, uh, the barrier they've put in is a very um, bright green. And I think it's fair to say that no one is happy with it. I, I, it's uh, also fair to say that my colleagues in Middleton Park Ward are on this right now, and I know Councillor Groves, uh, Trustwell, and uh, Blake are complaining very heavily about this, and I've seen quite a few emails from Councillor Groves, for example, to uh, Highways England about retrofying it. It's, it. The sound barrier is a good thing if it stops the noise from the motorway, 
but bright, bright green was probably not the best colour choice. Um, but that is being dealt with at the moment, as I said, predominantly by my colleagues in uh, Middleton Park Ward uh, before it hits this ward. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, in relation to the tree, Sarah, I'll pick that up with the housing officer for you and get an email sent out. Um, so I'll chase that up. Our forestry team is only doing priority cases that are immediate risk. So as you've put in your comment, I wouldn't expect it to be done anytime soon. But I'll chase up to make sure it's still on their list. Uh, let's see if there's anything else coming through. Uh, let's have a look. This is where you kind of need an assistant to start there getting the questions for you, like putting them across. It's much more high tech at Downing Street than this. It's me with about two computers and multiple screens. Um, let's have a look. Uh, social distancing. So a question about um, the police and social distancing. Um, it's a kind of a general question about whether or not uh, the police are getting it right. Look, I think I've said this in previous videos. I think it's a very difficult situation for the police. They have primary legislation, which gives them under the COVID Act or Act, and then they have guidance and they have to interpret it in a certain way. I think there was a response by the police that they perhaps overinterpreted it to a certain extent and they've now got more formal guidance. I do know speaking to our local PCSO who, when I'm walking the dog, uh, I seem to walk the dog the same time as they do their rounds around here. Um, they are being more cautious of. Uh, just to give you an example, they have what are called COVID cars at the moment. So there's 20 cars in Leeds uh, that the police have staff in. When a report goes in via the online um, COVID uh, breaches report form, they send the nearest car to basically go discouraging people to move people on. And they are doing that incredibly quickly, where they do know they are having issues with people gathering in antisocial ways. They are putting extra resources. Uh, the guidance is changing constantly. So they are in a difficult position. And I think we just need to be as tolerant and respectful as possible uh, while they deal with something which they were never really trained to deal with, which is, you know, we police by consent in this country. We don't tend to tell people to get back to the house uh, very often. Uh, let's have a look. Some other questions. Um, yeah, this keeps coming up every week. Um, in relation to uh, Leeds City Council staff, uh, why are they still out doing building work and road repairs? Um, simple answer is a lot of these are priority repairs. And I think, you know, Take things like a dropped curb. To someone that's mobile, um, you know, that is not a massive issue. If there's not a dropped curb there, you can get across the street. If you've got a pram, if you've got a wheelchair, if you've got a mobility scooter, if you've got a, a support frame, and actually to get to the next nearest crossing point, you're going to have to walk another 200 metres to get to the next dropped curb, fixing and replacing that dropped curb is an issue. So, you know, light repairs, uh, you know, I've had a couple of people report um, traffic lights going down. Well, someone needs to go out and repair them. The roads are still working. So all I would say is if you see Leeds Council staff out, they are doing their job. Some of them have got absolutely horrendous abuse um, for no reason other than doing their job. And, you know, we as a council are taking this seriously. I think the fact that we invested in a time for mortuary, the fact that we've shut all of our facilities down, the restrictions we've put in place should show that. We're only asking staff to go out and do manual kind of work like the bin crews, the um, street repair teams, the road repair teams, if it's a necessity. And I think people need to just appreciate the trying to do their job. Um, let's have a look at some other questions. Are you having meetings at the moment? Um, funny question. Uh, yes and no. So 
one of the jobs of a councillor is to go out and speak to people, have conversations and see what the community needs. It's to have meetings with other councillors um, and discuss uh, problems and come to solutions. And it's actually quite a, a tactile, face-to-face -face kind of thing. Uh, so in one sense, I'm having a lot less meetings. I'm having quite a few meetings uh, via this. Now, a lot of what the council does is actually governed by central legislation, primary legislation. So, um, for example, uh, they've had to change the law temporarily to say that councils don't have their annual AGM in May, so that we don't meet them necessarily. And they've had to give right legislation to say that we can have meetings via uh, video conference and ha so that those decisions are valid. So we are meeting uh, a lot of the council's normal procedures are starting up again, such as planning, etc. But they will be done via uh, video. Uh, there will be a lot of officer delegation where possible. So, you know, we are slowly getting back to a kind of new normal. But yes, we are meeting people. I'm having meetings with community groups all the time via this. Uh, but the formal stuff is starting to begin again. But it's, um, it's a bit weird when you've got like 12 people or... 13 or 14 people are wanting to have a chat. Um, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Paul, it's an interesting one about it being the right time to do road repairs now while it's quieter. It, it's one of those damned if you do and damned if you don't kind of situations. Uh, a lot of our staff is still actually not off well, uh, so are still off well at the moment or are self isolating, so it's uh, a bit of a mixed bag. Let's have a look. I think I've missed a question up here. Uh, Sarah, ah, yeah, I, I think someone's already answered your question, Sarah, about where Hunslet at Moor is. Uh, it used to be a lot, lot bigger, actually. If you look at the historic pictures of Hunslet at Moor, it went all the way up to the river. Um, question here from someone about offensive graffiti on the towpath. Someone sent me some pictures of this yesterday. Um, for those that don't know it, the, a lot of this, a good part of this one is along the riverfront of the River Air, and there's a very long towpath from uh, Poet Mill all the way up to Leeds Dock and just beyond. And we kind of made an informal uh, understanding in the council that we were going to have it as a urban art space. There was a lot of graffiti, some of it good, some of it uh, pretty poor. Uh, there was a lot of enforcement. It was wasting a lot of people's money and time. So we said, look, what we'll do is, as long as it's good quality, we'll allow you to do what you want and actually some of the artwork there is absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately uh, we've had a couple of occasions of racist and inappropriate graffiti uh, there's been an occasion uh, that's happened in the last few days that has been reported to our cleaner neighbourhoods teams uh, to remove that. It will be done as soon as possible. Uh, it is a shame actually because some of the uh, we say graffiti, we'll call it street art, is actually of a really superb quality and actually people have put their heart and soul to it so it's just unfortunate that people have decided to graffiti particularly with racist and abusive uh, language. Uh, let's have a look, a few more comments coming through. Uh, um, in terms of the traveller sites, um, not to my knowledge in North Leeds, if I'm completely honest with you, Bernard. Um, there's a geographical and a historical uh, occurrence with South Leeds. I mean, the Travellers community, for example, on Hunslet Moor has a nearly 200 year history. Now, Hunslet Moor used to be substantially much bigger than it is now. Uh, and we also have a lot more hard standing because of our industrial past in this part of the city. And we're right smack bang next to a motorway most of it so in terms of uh, a destination for the travellers community there's a long historical heritage of coming to this part of Leeds uh, there's hard standing and there's the motorway now just before uh, the lockdown happened I was having conversations with uh, Leeds Gate uh, in terms of this particular ward in Huntsman Riverside We've identified two sites, one under council ownership and uh, one under private ownership where we think it might be appropriate for what we call managed stops. So that's to say where the travelling community that isn't resident Leeds but is travelling through Leeds contacts the council in advance uh, via Leeds Gate, who have quite a large network, 
they arrange to go to one of these stop-offs. Uh, there's appropriate facilities there. They pay a bond, uh, and a deposit basically to say they will appropriately use the uh, facilities that we put there, and it's more managed. Um, I mean, I think it's fair to say most of the travels community that is that is resident of Leeds is actually in fictive abodes or permanent plots. Uh, they have a good relationship with the council uh, via Leeds Gate and their support networks. The, the issue we have tends to be the communities travelling through Leeds to other destinations, particularly for community events. And we are actively now trying to find suitable locations which mean that we fulfil our legal duty as a council. We do have a legal duty under different pieces of legislation to provide appropriate uh, sites for the travelling community but also make sure that we try and manage tensions between settled communities and the travelling community. Uh, it's something I am picking back up again with Leeds Gate at the moment. The other thing we need to bear in mind is, though some of these stopping off sites are obviously unauthorised encampments, you know, there is also a necessity at the moment to stop people travelling around. So I think in the short term, uh, we need to make sure people are using the authorised sites, uh, and that's conversations I'll certainly be having about sites in this ward, and I know councillors in other wards are having those conversations. But in answer to your initial question, I don't know if there are any sites in North Leeds. I would be surprised because of the motorway and the historical heritage of coming to South Leeds and of the hard standing. Whether that's fair is a different conversation, but we have to deal with the reality of what we have sometimes, uh, which always makes making decisions uh, interesting. Right, let's have a look at some other comments. Um, let's have a look. Um, right, um, school places. Um, so uh, yesterday was, some, someone sent a question about school places. Yesterday was a primary school allocation day. Um, so people received a lot of letters. Now, if people are concerned with the allocation they have, um, in the um, feed of my Facebook page, there's actually a very, very long post of what you need to do. Um, so it's something I would definitely uh, have a look on there. I'm not going to try and do chapter and verse on it. It's a complicated process. If you do have any specific questions or concerns about uh, or this is any parents who've been allocated places under the primary school allocation process, please don't hesitate to get in contact. Um, the normal telephone line for people uh, isn't working for that at the moment because staff are, are working from home. But there, I think it's school places or primary places at leaves.gov.uk. I'll put it into the, the feed uh, at the end of this, but there is a, a comment um, below further down in the Facebook with a lot of detail. Um, but since they've only come out, there's a lot to happen. We, we appreciate that. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, Paul, I appreciate there's quite a lot of land in, in North Leeds. I, I suppose one of the difficulties is about how that's managed. And if people are coming off the motorway uh, to find hard standing, it really depends on the direction. I think there's probably a question that, depending on the direction people are coming in and on which part of the motorway network, I think there's probably a fair conversation to have around areas in, in, in North Leeds. But I think what I want to do as a, as a local councillor is manage I know what's happening. There are a couple of sites where we know unauthorised encampments are happening that I want to resolve. There are a couple of sites we've identified where we can actually have really appropriate managed sites where we get the proper bonds, we get the proper um, infrastructure in place. The council's not at a financial loss for doing that. And we get a bit of both of both worlds. But there is probably a broader conversation about sites across the city. Uh, and I know colleagues uh, in the south uh, of the city are regularly having those conversations with our communities team uh, around that. Um, and under what's called this uh, site allocation plan, which is a really complex set of documentation about where we allow people to build new homes and sites. There is actually a requirement to have um, plots and sites spread throughout Leeds for everyone to take their, their fair share.
but it's a complicated process. It causes a lot of hostility and community tension. So it's really about trying to trying to manage those as best as possible, which is a long-winded way of saying uh, we do try to spread it out, but it's it is a complex process as a council. Um, let's have a look. Any more questions? Uh, good. Um, ah, someone sent me a, uh, a WhatsApp about council tax again. So, just to kind of reiterate the Leeds City Council's position on council tax at the moment. So, I think this was going to cause every single week. I might start with it. So, we're not doing a blanket discount for everyone. We're not doing a blanket... Uh, you don't need to pay. What we're saying is we're looking at people's personal circumstances. So, for example, in my household, me and my partner uh, can work from home. We're both on our full uh, wage at the moment. Um, so actually, we've got an ability to continue to pay our council tax. And I think it's completely and only absolutely right that we do so, bearing in mind, as I said at the start of this video, the council's looking at uh, at least a £129 million shortfall in its finances due to uh, the virus. What we're then saying is, actually, if you are in difficulty, then actually get in contact with us. So there'll be some people where uh, there's a main breadwinner, as it were, and someone has a part-time job. That person who's got that part-time job has gone on furlong or has been sadly made redundant, and actually probably will be able to support them with either reduced payments and council tax support via the benefit system, we'll help them through that. That will mean they don't get into arrears and they pay appropriate to their means. There will be some people who literally have lost all of their income and actually need not just council tax benefit, but they need a payment deferment for the rest of their council tax. That's not covered by council tax benefit. And so we will direct support to them. Uh, we are directing some financial assistance to some people automatically based on their council tax status. So all we're really saying is we're not doing a blanket approach just for one very simple reason. There are people in my situation, my household situation, that can pay and should pay because we're still doing our job, we're still getting paid full. And there are some people who really, really need help. And so we're going to direct that help to them. I just really implore them to get in contact so that we can do so. Um, same goes with rent, actually, if you're a, a Leeds housing um, tenant. Again, if you're a Leeds housing tenant, get in contact. If you're in financial difficulties, we'll assess your situation. If you need that support, we will provide it. Uh, let's have a look. Any more questions? Uh, have a look. Quite happy that my internet's keeping up with all this actually. Um, have a look. Uh, was the leaflet I got today from Lee City Council? Yes, so uh, you should all now be receiving, or should or may have received uh, through the door, a letter from Lee City Council uh, about our um, uh, emergency assistance scheme. Uh, these are legitimate leaflets. Uh, they're going to every single household in Leeds. Uh, they're having details on there of how to get in contact with the council if you need uh, assistance. Now, there are multiple layers of assistance we're giving. So for example, if it's a case of that you're financially okay, but you're having to self-isolate, you've got no friends or family, well, we'll basically do your shopping for you uh, and volunteers will go and do the shopping. If you are do have food at the moment, um, but actually uh, you're on a low income, you can't get out there, there's not anyone to help you, then we'll organise food parcels. Uh, if you are at emergency assist, uh, need of help, so basically you've got no food, there's no one to help, we'll arrange emergency food supplies there and then. So that number is really important. I, I'd really stress to anyone, if you are in difficulty, and you've got no one else there to support you, ring it. We have a small army of volunteers. I think it's just over 8,000 people in Leeds have signed up for the Leeds City Council scheme. We also know that the NHS volunteer scheme is so massively overprescribed, they don't have enough work for the volunteers. So we are uh, working with some of those volunteers to support. Um, 
Yes, Sarah. The the in terms of the um, shopping, it is intermittent. It depends on the number of volunteers they have. More volunteers are coming through, so that should change sooner rather than later. Uh, but a lot of it's about capacity. So there's a lot of capacity moving through the volunteer network at the moment. And now that the NHS volunteers are coming on board uh, to support us, that will help. Also, the supermarkets have now agreed to let uh, our volunteers jump the queue uh, if they're, as long as they've got their key workers documentation, which should also help speed up some of that process. Um, but it is, it is to a degree hit miss, I appreciate that. It really is dependent on the volunteer supply. I mean, just as an example, we've just authorised £10,000 worth of additional grants in the ward for other organisations um, to help support the main hub. So, for example, uh, Hunslet Club is now working with the Hunslet um, Assistance Hub via the Involved Centre to support that. So the situation is getting better. Uh, Let's have a look. Karen, with all the hubs closed, uh, you can. Uh, the unfortunate answer, Karen, yes, it is. Um, where your question is obviously not urgent, um, I would say get through to um, just the general inquiries email address. I think it's, yeah, I think it literally general inquiries or, in, sorry, or inquiries at leads.gov.uk. I, I can put it into the feed later. If it is urgent, it is unfortunately a case of staying on. I mean, I had to, mine wasn't urgent, so I, I didn't do it in the end, but I was on hold because I needed to drink, speak to council tax about something for about 20 minutes. And in the end, I thought, actually, it's better for more vulnerable people to get through. But it is a case with all of our numbers at the moment to hold. A lot of our call centre staff are still working, but they are working from home. Uh, and one of the problems is some of them are off sick or are acting as carers for their friends and family uh, who are self-isolating so we are down on staff uh, so it is a case of just holding um, and because we just had council tax bills come out there's a lot of people ringing about the council tax uh, so those who don't have urgent queries all I would really say is if you cannot ring please don't if it's just a general query to find out whether or not how much you're going to pay and your payment frequency or to change your direct debit, literally search engine, lead city council, council tax account, put in the details it asks for and you can do it all online. And if it's to say you're moving house, you can do it online. So anyone who doesn't have an urgent query, if you've got access to the internet, do it on the online service. I did what I needed to do on the end on that because I needed to change some direct debit details. It was actually a lot quicker than waiting to get through on the phone. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, any other questions coming through? It's probably easier for me to do this. Yeah, Paul, I'm really glad that your your, your mum got assistance uh, last week. Uh, again, uh, I think the, the local councillors were straight on to it. So, yeah, anything like that, we will obviously refer and pass on. Uh, let's have a look at any other comments and questions. Oh, we've got 10 minutes. We've gone through this one really quick this time. Uh, let's have a look. What's that plant behind you? That is a Monstera. Uh, it's one of my partner's favourite plants. Uh, it's huge. Um, and it's got new leaves coming through, which has uh, made them very, very excited. Uh, they're a bit of a plant fanatic. Um, one, one of these days I'll, I'll do this, I'll, I'll take Paul a little bit of a tour through, through my house because it's literally like a, a mini forest. Um, bring on Peggy. I mean, we are getting towards the end of this and I don't seem to be getting any more serious questions at the moment. So I'll go get Peggy two seconds. I'll, I'll give everybody a little... Peggy. Come on, dear. Oh, there you go. So, uh, uh, there we go. This is my uh, co-host, everyone. This is Peggy the dog. Um, my basset hound uh, she's just over six months old so you know a bit of light relief there at the end of this uh, I think she just wants to sleep at the moment so she's not as active as normal but there we go right let's see if there's any uh, more serious questions uh, 
So, uh, in terms of the uh, flyover, um, that's uh, ring fenced. I, I'm actually sort of. Are you talking about the flyover uh, at Regent Street, or are you talking about a different flyover, Sarah? If you just don't mind clarifying, because the one at Regent Street's from ring fenced funding uh, that was allocated. Uh, does she melt a lot? No, actually, she does at the moment. This is her first spring and summer. Well, first spring. So she's never lived through warmer weather before. So at the moment, she is literally molting hair absolutely everywhere. Uh, which is, because we've got wooden floors, means we're doing a lot of sweeping. Uh, no, McDonald's. Uh, fly. I'm not 100% sure what you're referring to. Uh, I might be having a memory blank. If you drop me a line, I'll, I'll have a double check of that because it's not ringing a bell uh thank you paul she's a she's a nice dog right let's see if there's any more serious questions right um not that not talking about peggy isn't serious uh right let's have a look uh right what's going on here um doo -doo 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 -doo. uh council tax question again Right, I'm going to refer people to my, my previous question about council tax uh, to the person that's asked that one. So if you want to have a look about five minutes to go, it will be on there. Uh, just in general, we're asking people just to contact us and where people need financial assistance, we will uh, give financial assistance. Um, let's have a look. Uh, any other questions? Um, do, 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 do. No, uh, the sound barrier, uh, the person actually sent me uh, an email about the sound barrier one. Uh, I did mention about the sound barrier on the M621, um, God, must be about 20 minutes ago in the feed. Um, there's also a post on my Facebook page. Uh, we are aware of it and the, the Middleton Councillors are picking that up with Highways England at the moment. It's technically on their side of the world boundary. Uh, we appreciate the bright greens, not to everyone's uh, taste, uh, but they are picking that one up at the moment. Uh, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. Right, I'm going to do a couple of quick other checks for questions, and then I think we are pretty much done for this week. Um, let's have a look. Right, it looks like that's pretty much it for questions. I don't have anything else on WhatsApp, Twitter, or Twitter direct message, email, or on the live feed. So what I'll probably do is just quickly finish just with a, a few final kind of words. I think the sacrifice that we are all making as a community at the moment is huge. Um, we are at our best social as a species and being stuck inside isn't great and for all the frustration and for all uh, the worry this has caused i was expecting an absolute avalanche of complaints about antisocial behavior of, of of a whole variety of issues and actually as a community you've all kept calm and collected for the most part there are a few spoiling it and i think we all can share the frustration of that the one thing I would ask, and I, and I know in the social media age it's, it's easy to do this, if you've got a genuine concern or worry about someone not following the lockdown rules or other problem, um, contact the right people. Try not to take a photo of them and put them online. It has caused some situations where people have got quite aggressive towards each other. And the last thing we need now is is people basically reprising against each other because of uh, someone sharing a photo. Uh, finally, all I would say is this, you know, we're in this situation for at least another three weeks. I think personally it will probably be longer. Um, if you need assistance, whether it's with council tax or rent, then there's a contact the council, we will help. Uh, this doesn't mean all of the problems stop. Uh, this week I've dealt with um, environmental issues, I've dealt with planning issues, I've dealt with licensing issues, housing issues. Um, the normal business of council is still going. I'm still here. Uh, 
to deal with your queries and worries and concerns so please do feel to get in contact but you know do as you've been doing try and look after each other best you can try and keep well try and keep safe and at that point i will leave it there and wish you an absolutely great weekend um i would love your feedback uh, about how you think this feed has gone whether you think there's anything uh, i can improve on uh whether there's anything you want me to do during this process as your counselor to uh help communicate with you better um other than that Thank you for listening. Have a great weekend and speak to you soon. See you next week.